Hi guys. This is Diagratech. Today, we are going to do an actual configuration on this Fortigate 60F with 40 OS version 7. We are going to configure PPPoE, PPPoE with VLAN tagging, DHCP, NAT, VLAN, and 40 Guard DDNS. We are not going to use console instead we will use GUI. We will connect LAN cable to port 1 which is for our LAN interface and it's currently connected to my laptop. Let's check the LED status, you can see the port 1 is already up. If you are new to my channel, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe and click on the notification bell for more amazing tutorials. Thank you. Let's proceed. I just factory reset this device. Now. Open a browser and enter the default IP address which is 192.168.1.99. Tick advance, continue. Every time you factory reset the device or fresh out of the box, the default username is admin with no password. Click login. You are required to change the default password. We will set admin as the password for this demo. Now. You have to relog in using the new password. We will do this FortiGate setup later, so choose later. Enable Don't Show again to disable this pop up. Here, you can see the host name, the serial number, the firmware version, which is 7.0.1, operation mode, the system time, uptime, and one IP, which is still not yet configured. Also, you can see the device license has been expired. Let's configure the host name and time zone. Go to System. Settings. Input your desired host name. Set the time zone depends on your location. Scroll down to the administrative settings. You can leave it all to default or you can change the HTTP and HTTPS port. For this demo, we will use 9443 for the HTTPS port. Scroll down, you can change the language and themes, 40 OS 7 have the new themes added, you can choose other themes based on your likings. Also, we have this new options which is the API preview and edit in CLI, you can click API review to view the changes you're about to save. You can see the host name and also the admin port which we just edited. You have the option to directly edit in CLI from here. Notice that it is all set to default since we haven't clicked apply yet. Exit the window and click apply. Now, we must re-log in using the new HTTPS port which is 9443. You can simply add colon and the HTTPS port which is 9443. If you edit the admin port, every time you access the device, you need to add the admin port behind the IP address. Click login. Now, let's check the interfaces. Go to Network. Interfaces. This are the interfaces and IP address configured by default. Let's configure the PPPoE without VLAN tagging. We will configure one one as our internet facing interface or our one. You can input your desired alias, I usually input the ISP name for reference. Role should be one. For the addressing mode, choose PPPoE. Now, enter the PPPoE details or username and password provided by your ISP. For the retrieve default gateway from server. You can disable this one if you want to manually configure default route, or you can leave it enabled and no need for you to configure the default route. I usually enable this option for PPPoE configurations for me not to create static route. If your PPPoE is configured on the ISP router then check my other video tutorial for that. For the distance, we can leave it as default, this depends on your requirements. Under administrative access we will enable ping for troubleshooting purposes. HTTPS for GUI or web access. You can also enable SSH if you prefer CLI. Again, you can tick on the API preview to view the changes. 
you can see all the changes we are about to apply. Once done, click OK to apply the changes. That's how to configure PPPoE. Now we are going to configure PPPoE with VLAN tagging. But first we have to remove the configuration on one one, assuming it's a fresh install or new device. Click create new, choose interface. We will give a name of Wang, for the alias, we can enter the ISP name which in my case is Unify. Type would be VLAN. For the interface, we will use one one. For the VLAN ID, you need to input the VLAN ID provided by your ISP, some ISPs requires VLAN tagging like my case is VLAN 500. Role should be one. For the addressing mode, choose PPPoE. Now, input the PPPoE details or the username and password provided by your ISP. Again, I will leave retrieve default gateway from server enabled for me not to manually configure the default route. For the distance, we can leave it as default, this depends on the requirements. For the administrative access, we will enable ping for troubleshooting purposes, HTTPS for secure GUI or web access, and SSH if you prefer CLI. Again, you can tick API preview to view the changes we are about to apply. Click OK to apply the changes. To view the configured VLAN sub interface. Click on the plus sign in which interface you configured the VLAN, in my case is 1-1. One one. You can see the VLAN interface. Now, let me connect the cable to the 1-1 one one interface. You can see the 1-1 one one interface is now up. Let's now check the VLAN interface. Notice the IP address received, however I received private IP address, maybe I need to reboot my modem, although you can see the PPPoE status is connected. Next is we will configure the LAN interface. We can simply edit this pre-configured internal. You can enter alias name. We can leave the VLAN ID to default. Notice the interface's members. Role would be LAN. For the addressing mode, leave it to manual since we are going to set the IP address manually. For the IP net mask, we can change the gateway to 192.168.1.1 with slash 24 subnet. This depends on the requirements. An object address subnet will be automatically created with the name internal with this IP net mask. For the administrative access, we will enable ping, HTTPS, and SSH access. For the DHCP server, we will configure.110 to 254. Again this is all depends on the requirements. Next is the DNS server, you can specify then enter your internal DNS if you have or you can enter the Google DNS. Next is the lease time. It's currently set to 7 days by default, this means, the DHCP will automatically expire and renewed every after 7 days. You can click advanced if you want to configure DHCP reservations. I suggest you enable device detection for you to view the connected devices and details. Click OK to apply the changes. Now, we have to re-log in using the new default gateway configured. 192.168.1.1 and the admin port 9443. Let's check the configured LAN interfaces. Going back to the VLAN interface. Again, since we enabled this retrieve default gateway from server then we don't need to configure the default route. Next is we will configure the firewall policy. Go to policy and objects. Firewall policy. We have this pre-configured policy. You can use this policy if your PPPoE is configured on the 1-1 one -one without VLAN tagging or, if the PPPoE is configured on the ISP router and you set IP address manually on this interface. 
In our case, we created sub-interface for VLAN tagging so we have to create new policy and point it to this VLAN interface. First is we will create DNS policy. Click create new. We can give a name of DNS to make it simple. Incoming interface will be the LAN or internal. For outgoing interface, we will point it to the VLAN interface which we configured as our WAN. Source will be the internal. This address has been automatically created when we configured the LAN or internal interface. Destination to all. Schedule to always. And for the service, we will choose DNS. Enable NAT. For the security profiles. We will use the default profiles for this demo. You can create new profile based on your likings. Enable the antivirus. Again, we will use default profiles. Enable DNS since this policy is for DNS, and enable the SSL inspection. Click OK to apply the changes. Notice that we point it to the VLAN interface which in my case is the Unify, we will not point it to the one one. Next is the HTTP HTTPS policy. We can copy and paste then edit the created policy. To do this, right click on it then choose copy. Right click again then you have the option to paste above or below, we will choose below. To edit the policy, click on the pen sign or simply double click on it. We will give a name of HTTP HTTPS. Leave the rest to default, we will change the services to HTTP HTTPS. Enable NAT. Under security profiles, we will enable antivirus, web filter since this policy is for web access. Disable the DNS filter. We can enable the IPS scanning. Lastly the SSL inspection. You can rename or remove the comments. We can enable the policy or we can enable it later. Click OK to save the policy. We can enable the policy from here, right click on it, set status then choose enable. Next is the email services policy. We can clone and edit the created policy again. Right click on it then click copy. Right click again then paste below. Double click to edit the configuration. We will give a name of mail. Leave the rest to default. For the services we will choose the email access under services group, you can see the members of this group. Under security profiles, we will enable antivirus. Application control. IPS, and again the SSL inspection. For the log allowed traffic you can choose all sessions for each policy for troubleshooting purposes. Rename or remove the comments. Click OK to apply the policy. Enable the policy. You can create more policies based on your preference. Lastly, we will create internal to all policy or all to all policy. We can clone and edit the created policy again. Give a name of land to all. Leave the rest to default. For the services, we will change it to all. This policy means, all internal devices can access anything, no scheduling and all services are allowed. Enable NAT. Since this is all to all policy then it's better to enable all available security profiles. Click OK to apply the changes. Enable the created policy. We will create those four basic policies for this demo. The policy role is top comes first. So basically, first traffic will hit the DNS, then HTTP HTTPS until it reach the all to all policy. You can keep on creating more policies then after few months depending on the size of the company, you can delete the all to all policy if no traffic is hitting it or not in use. We can delete the unused policy which is pointing to one one. Right click on it then choose delete policy. Click OK to proceed. Let's refresh the page. You can now see traffic is passing through.
Let me turn off my Wi-Fi. Now, let's check the internet access. We will check what is my IP. We encountered this issue because the FortiGate UTM license has been expired. If the UTM license expired then you cannot browse the internet, what you need to do is disable the web filtering until the UTM license has been renewed. To do this, go back to Policy and Objects. Firewall Policy We have to edit the HTTP HTTPS policy. Under Security Profiles Disable the web filter. Apply the changes. Now, go back to the page then refresh it again. Now, we can browse the internet. You can see my public IP address. Going back to the firewall policies, you can see the traffic is hitting the DNS and the HTTP HTTPS policy. Lastly, we will configure the dynamic DNS or DDNS. Go to network. DNS. Enable 40 guard DDNS. For the interface, choose your one or internet facing interface. If the PPPoE is configured on the one one then choose that interface. However, in our case, we configured PPPoE with VLAN tagging so we will choose the VLAN interface. Enable use public IP address for you to access it anywhere. For the server, we have this free servers available, you can choose based on your preference. We will choose 40 DDNS for this demo. Enter your desired unique location or any word you prefer. If you see the error domain not available then choose another word, edit the unique location again until you see it's available. Click apply. Notice my public IP address beside the DDNS. You can now use the dynamic DNS to access the device anywhere. Even if you reboot the modem or your public IP address has been renewed. You can still use the DDNS to access the device. This is recommended if you did not subscribe static or fixed public IP address. Well. That's all for today's demonstration and I really hope you liked this video. If you are new to my channel. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe and click on the notification bell for more amazing tutorials. Thank you and see you in the next video.